Welcome back to the Be Dynamic Podcast. I'm your host, Darnisha, and I am so excited. I'm so excited to be back. I know it's been it's been upwards three months now. I think the last episode was probably in April. I think. I don't even know. That's how long it's been. It's, it's been a minute. My apologies. Life was life and it was a lot going on and I wanted to... I wanted to record so bad, but in certain circumstances, you just, life happens. But we're here, we're back, and I really do want to use this episode as like an update episode, but also give you some things that I have learned in the last few months and encourage you through the things that I've gone through, experienced, and learned. We've had a lot happen in the past few months. Um... We've done two events. We moved, moved from Georgia. We are now in Memphis, Tennessee. We are back home. Growth on social media is growth for the business. It's a lot we got to talk about. So I'm going to try to start from the beginning and get my timelines right. So let's just get straight into it. So first of all, we got to talk about the move. We moved from Georgia, from Savannah, Georgia, back to Memphis. And I'm just so happy to be back. Number one, I'm happy to be back because I'm finally back around my friends and my family. And I just feel like this is real life. This is real life. Um, this is how it should be in real life. So basically, the uh, people always act moving back to Memphis. You know, you get those looks like, what? Huh? My reasoning for moving back to Memphis, which y'all have seen in the past videos, is just the business in general. It was not doing what it was supposed to do or I couldn't do what I wanted to do in Savannah, Georgia, um, just because that wasn't the environment where my target audience was. But since moving back, um, we've grown tremendously. I've been able to get out, network, do events a little easier than I was when I was so far away. And that was the thing. Like It was just so far away from everything. Nine hours, 12 hours, 10 hours, like from everything, um, everything I knew. What else? So when we first got back, like the second week back, <laughs> second week back, we had an event to do. Um, Black, what was that event? Oh, it was a Juneteenth event. That's what it was. It was a Juneteenth event, downtown Memphis. It was so hot. It was so hot. But everything went good. Um, my purpose, my goal for that event was just to build my um, contacts. I definitely just wanted to get eyes on the brand. Brand awareness was the biggest thing for me in that event. Um, it was okay. Um, Revenue-wise, it was okay. It wasn't the best. But it was one of those events where it was a lot of people and not... It wasn't a niche group of people, if that makes sense. Like, it was older people, younger people, kids. It was just a lot going on, so I wasn't really... I was in the face of my target audience, but also in the face of other audiences as well that didn't really resonate with my brand. So it was okay. Let's see. Let's see. Shout out to everybody who supported at that event for sure. Thank you guys for coming out. Thank you guys for stopping by the table, um, seeing what we had going on. If you're watching the podcast and video version, maybe I'll insert a video so you guys can see what the setup was like what everything you know was that day but that was really fun the next event that we did was this was like probably a month ago at this point it was at Grambling State University really good event now that was like that's where my target audience was so I was really happy about that um it went really well revenue wise contact wise it went really well and people really responded to the brand in a way that helped me understand what my audience wants more. It helped me understand what they're looking for. So I really appreciated that. Um, thank you again to everybody who came out and supported us that day. We met a lot of new people. Shout out to my sister and her friend for helping on that event because I would not have been able to do it by myself. It's just, I like to make my, I like to make my setup interactive. So because it's interactive, you get a lot of people. That's a tidbit if you got a business. 
Make your setup interactive in some way. Give them an experience. So because it was interactive and it was an experience, it was a lot of people like just showing up. So I know I wouldn't have been able to do it by myself. So I really appreciate them. Um, oh, let's get into it. I, um, so before I left Savannah, probably I say a month before we left, I decided to, you know, let's try this influencer market. Let's try, let's try the influencer marketing thing. Let's try to send out some packages to some people, to some people that I watch on TikTok, YouTube, stuff like that. So I ended up sending packages probably to four or five influencers and you know, we're just going to see what happens, whatever. So, um, the week we're packing up to leave one of the influences that I watch, um, Harmony, thank you to Harmony. Shout out to her. Um, I sent her some shirts and, you know, wristbands and things like that. And she actually opened up the package on live. I actually missed the initial live where she unboxed the package or whatever. But I caught one of her lives and she saw me in there and we were talking about it, whatever. It was really cool. Um, definitely gets eyes on the brand once again. And it helped us gain followers on our TikTok as well. So, you know, that was super exciting for me. That was the first time that that had ever happened. So I'm just like, oh my gosh. Okay, this might work. You know, this influencer marketing thing might work. It might do something. Weeks go by, literally weeks. And nobody else is like saying anything about the packages I sent out. I'm literally thinking nothing of it at this point because in between moving, starting a new job, I'm thinking nothing of it. So one day I'm at my new job and I'm just sitting there and I, I keep getting notifications on my Instagram and I'm like, what is this? Like my brand Instagram, I keep getting so-and-so followed you and so-and-so followed you and I'm like um am I going viral <laughs> like literally I'm sitting there like what is going on so I go to the restroom you know you gotta go hide out if you finna like be in your phone for real so I go to the restroom and I'm looking at my phone like what what is going on I'm trying to figure it out I go to Instagram I see that people are following me but I'm not seeing like what's going on I'm just I'm not understanding where the people are coming from because I'm not seeing like a video or my video being like or anything like that. So I'm so confused. So my TikTok notifications are off. If you know me, I just, I don't like notifications. Instagram is probably the only place where my, Insta my notifications are actually on. Facebook off, everything else is just off. So my TikTok was off and I went to TikTok and I was like, Oh my God, what, like what is going on? Because it was more traction on TikTok than it was on the Instagram. So I'm really trying to figure out like what? So I see that, um, another influencer that I had sent a package to, he's 14, I think he's 14. His name is Caleb. I, um, his mom is actually over the page. It's his mom's page. And I just sent it to his PO box. So he did an, um, unboxing or unpackaging because it wasn't a box whatever so he did an unboxing of the package and people were loving the hoodie I sent him a hoodie um t-shirts and wristbands because I noticed that he always wears the wristbands that we have so I sent him a lot of those so that was the video that was getting me so much traction that whole week and still to this day, it's months later at this point. It's probably two months later now. And still to this day, that video is gaining us followers each and every day on TikTok. That video did a million. I think it did over a million at this point in views on TikTok. So that really helped the brand grow a lot. It was it was exciting. It was different. People were purchasing. Um it was, it was nice. It was nice to actually experience consistent growth, consistent sales. And it only came from that one person posting their reaction to the brand. So that was really good. It, it, it made me very happy. 
So a couple things that I've learned from that though is in my opinion, the table wasn't prepared. The table wasn't prepared, but I had to jump into action and do what I could um, because I was getting orders for the hoodies and I didn't have all these hoodies, you know, but I'm like, I can't right now in the heat of the moment, I can't sell out because if you sell out and you have all these people that want to experience your brand, they're just going to leave because they can't experience your brand if you're sold out. So I'm up in the inventory, I'm buying new inventory, making hoodies, sending out these packages. And it was just, it was exciting. It was definitely eye opening and it was a learning moment for me. It was also a learning moment because like I said, my table wasn't prepared. And when you're gaining influencer marketing is cool. As I've learned, it's great. But if you're not prepared for the growth that could come with the influencer, it could mean nothing. So I'm like, all these people are coming to the TikTok and I don't have any TikToks to post. So I start to try to create a few TikToks so they can interact. They can have something to nourish them. You have to nourish the audience that you're gaining because if you don't, they're just going to go away. They're going to forget about you. So I just wanted to make sure that I was creating some sort of TikToks, you know, something to encourage that audience and nourish them. Um, but I noticed like, oh my gosh, I, I'm not prepared. And you know, I just started this new job. So I'm like trying to get the hang of that still was not settled at all. I was at my mom's house back in my old bedroom, back with the old setup. And I just had to make it do what it do. I had to make something out of nothing. We were not settled at all. Still not settled, but I'm here. I'm just committed to getting back started with the podcast. Committed to giving you guys encouragement. And um, yeah, we here. What else has been going on? I feel like I'm going to forget something. I'm going to forget something. I don't know. But soon... I just, I just see major growth for the brand. I just see major growth happening. And I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I, I'm just so excited. And I'm no longer in the business of trying to explain my vision to people who can't see it. If you can't see it, whatever. You'll see it when it happens. Because it's happening. Literally, I'm living through the growth. I started, before I moved, I probably had, I don't know, maybe 300, 600. I don't remember. But it was somewhere around there. I think it was like 300 and something followers on Instagram and TikTok. And now we're at 2,000 on TikTok. And that was from one video. That was from one video somebody else posted. Imagine if I, which I will, imagine when I'm consistent, consistently dropping, consistently giving my audience what they need. Imagine that. Um, It's all going to work out, but I'm no longer in the business of trying to explain to people what I want out of my life, what I plan to do with my life. I'm just no longer in the business of that. Cause like I said, if you can't see it, you can't see it, but you're going to see it when it happened. And that's just period. That, that, that was personal. <laughs> that was personal because I just, people will ask you, um, what you want to do or what you got going on, what you've been doing. Then when I tell them, Oh, I'm a clothing brand owner. So I'm just going my clothing brand right now. I re- don't really plan to be here long. Um, That's what I really want to do in my life, my podcast, the YouTube channel, things like that. When I say that, you should see the looks I get. It's looks, it's doubt for look. You know how doubt, you can just see doubt in somebody's face. That's what it is. And it just, it makes my blood boil. Because it's just like, why, why even ask me? Don't ask me that. We don't have to make small talk. We don't, we don't have to do none of that. Just let me do me, you do you. I don't and people always want to say what you should do. You should do this, you should do that. What? And I'm just like, "What?" because I spent so much time studying this, studying 
building a brand and trying to implement these things that have worked for other brand owners. And it's just like, are you not even listening to me? What I said I want, are you not even listening? But it's not that. It's just everybody can't see it. Everybody can't get the vision that you have in your head. So I, I just have to tell myself it's okay. They just can't see it. And it's not for them to see because they're not the ones who have to build this out. It's for me to understand, me to see, anybody I bring around me to work with the brand. It's for them to see and it's for us to work towards. So, yeah, don't 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 get too caught up on people not seeing your vision um, because it'll stump your growth. And me personally, I deal with enough doubt from myself. And that's just me being honest. I deal with enough doubt from myself, enough fear from myself. I don't need anybody else's fear projected onto me. I don't need the doubt of anyone else projected onto me because I'm already working on that within myself. And honestly, I feel like that's why I just keep my distance. <laughs> I keep my distance and I keep the talk down because... What I want to talk about and what other people want to talk about most of the time is just not aligned. And what they're saying is just not aligned with what I want to do with my life. Um, it's it's a very difficult truth, but it's my truth. And that's just what it is. That's why I'm just, I just be chilling. Because I know that we're just not on the same wavelength here. Um, and it's not... It's not a cocky thing. It's just, it's just a confidence thing. Like it's just what I know personally. So, um, yeah, being a business owner and trying to grow something from the ground up, you can feel like you're out of the loop. You can feel like you're an outcast, but you just got to find your people. Find your people who understand you. Find your people who are truly rooting for you and focus on them. Like, don't focus on the people who don't understand you because it's just going to cause more doubt for yourself. I've been, I don't know, it's definitely been, this is progress season. This is progress season and I'm ready for the growth. Um... I've been through the changes and I'm continuously changing. Y'all know change does not stop. It does not let up. You have to continue, continuously change if you want to grow. But this is progress season and I'm excited. I am just excited to see what's next. I'm learning. I'm learning how to handle everything at once. It's not perfect. It's not perfect by no means, but I'm learning how to handle it all. One thing I did want to talk about that really, because I've been thinking about like, what am I going to talk about on the first episode back on the Be Dynamic podcast? Like what, what am I going to talk about? But one of the things I really want to discuss, two things, I want to discuss how if you want big results, that takes big sacrifices. And being in Savannah, peaceful. I mean, peaceful. And I've noticed even more being away from Savannah, how peaceful it was. Peaceful, right? But I I had to sacrifice a little bit of that peace for a little bit of chaos. But that is going to result in big, big growth for the brand. I had to come back to the big city. I had to come back and be around people. I just can't sit in my little bubble in my peaceful little world and think that my brand is going to grow like that. Being back here, it's it's opened me up to talk to people, meet people that are just that are understanding of what I'm doing, the wavelength I'm on, that are in the same in the same industry. It's opened me up to talk to people, to meet people, to introduce people to the brand. In Savannah, it just wasn't that for me. It was peaceful, but it wasn't growing for me. Um, I was learning a lot. I was getting a lot of knowledge, 
but I just wasn't growing physically with the brand. So letting that peaceful environment go, um, it was a sacrifice for sure. But like I said, big sacrifices, big results. Can't be scared to take that risk. And that's what I'm doing here. Like literally, that's what I'm doing. The situation I'm in is not ideal. It's not where I want to be. But I'm going to make it work and we're going to grow from this. Um, so second point. God will make you so uncomfortable that you have to move. You got to go. You got to go in order to grow. Okay. I, every job I've had, literally, and I, it's at the point where now I know it's going to happen eventually. No matter if I love the job, I love the people because I'm a natural entrepreneur and I just think differently from what from the way that other people think in jobs, I become uncomfortable at some point. It gets to be too much at some point. And some jobs is sooner than others. And it's nothing really that anybody did or anything that happened. It's just the feeling that I get within myself. At Sherwin, it was great. I love that was probably one of the greatest jobs I've ever had. I met some of the greatest people that I've ever met, but within myself, I was very uncomfortable with little things like the time I didn't have, the freedom I didn't have, the travel to the job. I just became very uncomfortable with everything, and I had to really figure figure out what's next. What do I need to do to get out of this uncomfortable state? So that I can feel like I'm growing. So that I can actually grow. Not just feel like I'm growing, but actually grow. And it just happened to be moving back home. That That's what I was supposed to do, move back home. Before we actually decided to move back, I struggled with that. Like, am I really supposed to move back home? Because isn't growth supposed to be like moving from home, not moving back home? So I struggled with that for a while, but I was definitely at peace. Like this is what I'm supposed to do. And that's just, that's what happens. We're here, but this isn't our plan. This isn't for us. Um, I, I strongly believe that the things that happen to us isn't necessarily for us. The things that happen to me, the things that I go through, it isn't for me. It's for me to come here and talk to you, tell you about it. So you won't feel alone. So you can feel encouraged. So you can feel inspired. That's what I believe. I believe that's why I go through the things I go through. Because God has a bigger plan. This 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 is a huge world. We're just little pieces in this huge world. We're little pieces in his huge wheel. And he will make you so uncomfortable to where you have to move. You have to do what he wants you to do. This isn't your world. This is his. So keep those two things in mind. Keep in mind that if you want big results, you have to make big sacrifices. And keep in mind that if you're feeling uncomfortable, if something is making you uncomfortable, sometimes that means you have to move. Sometimes that means you have to grow. Figure out which one it is. Don't beat yourself up over the uncomfortableness. Just figure it out. That's all I have for you guys in this episode of the Be Dynamic Podcast. Thank you guys so much for tuning back in. And we're back. We're back. Continue to change, progress, grow, be dynamic. I'll see you guys in the next one. I hope you Bye. learn to make it on your own. And if you let yourself, just know you'll never be alone. I hope that you get everything you want and that you chose.